Good day, two Ps. Our topic today is rearranging linear equations. Our goal, I can rearrange a linear equation into slope and y-intercept form in order to find out what the slope and the y-intercept are. So section 4.4, uh, convert linear equations from standard form. Now, in the last unit, we were always given equations in y equals mx plus b form. And equations don't always come in y equals mx plus b form. Uh, sometimes we have to rearrange them. Uh, but we did a lot of work with y equals mx plus b form. So when we were given it in the form of y equals mx plus b, uh, m was our slope and b was our y-intercept. And so for this particular equation I have here, the slope is m and the y-intercept is b. So if somebody asked me what the slope and y-intercept were, I would say that the slope is 7, notice that 7, not 7x, seven just the number in front of the x, and the y-intercept is 10. But not all equations are given to us in slope y-intercept form. And this equation here happens to be in what we call standard form. Standard form of the line gives us everything on one side and 0 on the other. Uh, it also makes sure that there are no fractions and decimals. We can see all of these are nice integer values. And we, uh, we have a positive number out in front of the x. Those are the three things that make it in standard form. Everything on one side, zero on the other, no fractions or decimals of any kind, and the number in front of the x is positive. Um, but it doesn't give us any information. Well, if I asked you what the slope and the y-intercept are, you don't know. This number here, that is not the slope because this is not in the proper form for it to be slope. This number here, that is not the y-intercept because it is not in proper form to be able to pick out the slope and the y-intercept. So what we have to do is rearrange this to get y completely by itself. And we're going to do that using our um, skills of rearranging equations like we did in the last lesson. So in slope y-intercept form, the y is completely by itself. So to put the equation in slope y-intercept form, we have to follow these steps. Step one says add or subtract the y term on both sides of the equation. So here's our y term. Our y term here has a negative. So to get rid of a negative, we add. We do the opposite. We add 6y to both sides. If I've added 6y on this side, that goes away, and I'm simply left with 2x plus 12 equals, and on this side, 0 plus 6y is just 6y. Now, step 2 says divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient of the y term. Well, the coefficient of the y term in this case is that 6. So I'm going to divide both sides by 6. And step three says distribute the division through both the x term and the constant term and reduce to lowest terms. So this side, my sixes go away and I'm left with just a y. And on this side, I have to make that six go with both the two and the 12. So I get 2x over 6 plus 12 over 6. And now I have to reduce to lowest terms. 2 over 6, 2 goes into 2 once, and 2 goes into 6 3 times. So this is 1 third x plus, and 12 divided by 6 is 2. So this equation is now in slope y-intercept form because I have the y completely by itself. And now if somebody asked me what the slope and the y-intercept was, I could tell them that the slope is 1 third and that the y-intercept is 2. So we're going to go ahead and try a few more of these. So here we go. I'm going to go through these ones. This says put the following equations in slope y-intercept form, then state the slope and the y-intercept. So I'm going to start. I'm going to follow those steps. The first thing said to add or subtract the y term. Well, this y term is being subtracted, so to get rid of it, I need to add a y. And if I add a y on that side, I have to add a y on that side as well. And once I've done that, these y's are going to go away. So I'm left with 4x plus 11. And on this side, just plain old y. And since I have just plain old y on that side, it's now in slope y-intercept form. So if somebody asked me what the slope was, I could tell them because the slope is the number with the x. So the slope is 4. And if somebody asked me what the y-intercept was, I could tell them because the constant term here 
11 is my y-intercept. Okay, now let's do the other one here. Um, we're going to subtract 4y on both sides because I have to get rid of this constant term and get or get rid of this y term and get it over on both on the other side by subtracting 4y on both sides. When I subtract 4y, it's gone off of this side. And so my equation now becomes 8x minus 12 equals negative 4y. Now, to get y completely by itself, I have to divide both sides by negative 4. And the negative 4 take and the negative 4 divide away to 1. So I'm left with 1y on this side. And now this negative 4 goes with both of these terms. So I'm going to get negative 8 over 4 because and with an x. And then negative 12 divided by negative 4 is going to give me plus 12 over 4. Watch the signs there. And now I'm going to reduce to lowest terms. These actually come out to be really nice numbers. 8 divided by 4 is 2, so that's negative 2x. And 12 divided by 4 is 3, so that's plus 3 equals y. Now it's in slope y-intercept form. So if somebody asks me what the slope is, I can tell them the slope is the number with the x right here. So it's negative 2. And if I want to know what the y-intercept is, I know that the y-intercept is the constant term all by itself, which is 3. And notice that that definitely, those numbers did not appear in the very first equation that we were given. Now, doing one more. Remember, the first thing we have to do is get the y term off of this side of the equation. So to get that y term, I have to subtract 10y because it's being added here. You do the opposite operation, so subtract 10y. And if I do that on one side, I have to do it on the other. So this side is 3x minus 6. And on the other side, I have subtract 10y or minus 10y. And now to get the y completely by itself, I have to divide both sides by negative 10. And I divide by negative 10 on this side. Now remember, we have to distribute that negative 10 through. I'm good on this side. This side has only a y. On this side, that negative 10 has to go through. So negative 3 over 10, x. And then the two negatives right here are going to be a positive. So, positive 6 over 10. And now I have to reduce to lowest terms. Well, the 3 over 10 is already in lowest terms. There's nothing that can, can reduce there. And over here, uh, 2 goes into 6 3 times and into 10 5 times. So, plus 3 fifths equals y. And once again, if someone asks me what the slope is, I can tell them what the slope is because the slope is this number with the x. It's negative 3 tenths. And the y-intercept? The y-intercept is the number complete or that's by itself, and that number is 3 fifths. Okay, so the next one. We've got a little bit of filling in to do. Example 2, the line 2x plus by minus 20 equals 0 goes through the point 4, 3. Find the value of b. Well, this 2x plus by minus 20 equals 0 is basically just a formula. And what I've given you here when I gave you the 4 and the 3 is I've given you an ordered pair that's x and y. So instead of an x, I'm going to write 4. And remember, this is 2 times x, so it's going to be 2 times 4. And instead of a y, I'm going to write a 3. So that's going to be b times 3, and then minus 20 equals 0. Now we just have to rearrange to get the b by itself. 2 times 4 is 8. 3 times b is just 3b. And then we have minus 20 on this side. Well, I have to collect like terms, so this positive 8 and negative 20 go together to make negative 12. So I have b, 3b minus 12 equals 0. And now I have to get the 3b 
and then the B by itself. So I'm going to add 12 to both sides to get the 3B completely by itself. 3B equals 12. And now to get the B completely by itself, I divide both sides by 3. And my B is going to be equal to 4. Because 12 divided by 3 is 4. So I found B as I asked. And now one more word problem. Uh, example three, Jostens charges a setup fee plus $12 per book printed when they are hired to print a school's yearbook. For 250 books, the total fee is $8,678. What is the initial setup fee? Well, we've been doing these since last year. Cost is an initial setup fee, so we can call that an initial value, I, plus the cost per book which is $12, uh, times the number of books ordered. So this is one of those things where I have initial value plus rate of change times the number of things that are there. Now I just need to actually fill some stuff in that I know. It says that our total fee is $8,678. So that's our C. Our I is what they're being asked for. What is the initial setup fee? So we don't know what that is. Let's keep it as an I. And it says that N is 250. So to find the cost, the initial setup fee, I just have to know what the cost is of these 250 books. And I'm going to subtract that off of the total cost using my algebra skills. And that will give me what the setup fee is. So the initial value plus $3,000 for the printing of the books uh, is going to give us the $8,678. And now to get the I completely by itself to find out what the setup fee is, I'm going to subtract $3,000 on both sides. And that gives us I, which is what we want. We want to know what the initial setup fee is. And then this is going to give us $5,678. So we can say, therefore, the setup fee is $5,678. And that concludes our lesson for today.